Hi, this is Professor Serge Lassette, and I wanted to share some information into systems thinking and feedback loop structure. As we have seen before, systems thinking is a way of thinking to describe and understand the forces and interrelationships that shape the behavior of a system. In this short video, we will see systems in operations through feedback loop structure in order to control the output of the system. First, let's examine two basic looping structures, reinforcing loops and feedback loops. Let's look at a dashboard of a car, for example. We see gauges such as tachometer reflecting the input to the system, a speedometer indicating the output, the speed, fuel and engine temperature gauge as process measurements. Let's say we are driving our car down the road. We apply pressure on the throttle and the effect is seen in the tachometer, the input to the system. If the input is steady, then the result will be a steady output, graphically shown here as a straight line. Let's apply an external force to the system. Imagine, if you will, you drive along and you run into a hill. If the input does not change, the car will start picking up speed, shown by the red line, and at some point will go out of control. This is called a reinforcing loop. Let's look at another example in business. We see many reinforcing loops in business as well. A company invests into new products, the cars, which are purchased by the customers, the effect. The resulting revenue, another cost, is then reinvested into new products, the effect. And this goes on and on until some external force is applied that impacts the revenue stream. Let's go back to our car and let's introduce a cruise control system. We have just seen the effect of an external force on our car. With a cruise control system, we can set the cruise speed at 70 miles per hour. Let's call that our reference point. Next, we need a sensor that will measure the actual speed. The actual speed then becomes an input to a monitor which calculates the difference between actual and reference speeds. A controller finally adjusts the throttle which updates the input to the system. The output of the system is graphically shown here. There is a little oscillation at first showing a change in speed due to the external force where after a little while the reference point is reached again. This type of system is called a feedback loop structure and it provides control over the output of the system. There are many applications of feedback control structures and you just need to look for them. For example, sweating reduces our body temperature. Florida would be very uncomfortable without an air conditioning unit. And there are many instances of feedback loop structures in business. Product quality issues are external forces and, unless remedied, can cause decline in customer satisfaction and potential lost revenue. The reference point and monitor are associated with dashboards or balanced scorecards reflecting metrics and business goals. The system sensor is a statistical process control charts put in place to understand the variability of the output of the system. Finally, the controller is made up of problem solving methods such as DMAIC and process improvement methods such as Lean, Six Sigma, and the science of improvement. In conclusion, applying systems thinking 
we are going across levels of abstraction from analysis to synthesis where we have a systems view of a feedback loop control structure within the context of quality.